watching exciting NASCAR action on TSN. Saymart 300, led by Dale Earnhardt. Ernie Irvin running in second position. Between them is Dick Trickle in car number 75. We might mention that there were five drivers who came here and did not make the race. Tony Hunt, Wayne Jacks, Jack Seller, Scott Gaylord, and Rick Schribner. All of those Winston West competitors, the Winston West Provisionals, went to Hersham McGriff and Rick Corelli. There is Jeff Bodine. And Jerry Punch has a report off the 15 car from Pit Road. Standing here at the Dale Earnhardt Pit, they're, they're clocking the top four or five cars with different crew members. And the quickest laps the past couple laps have been by the car number 15. He has turned the pace up. They have turned and told car owner Richard Childers and Andy Petrie that apparently Jeff Bodine is running harder and harder now the past three or four laps. Seventh in points, Jeff Bodine. Started third. Still in third. He did lead lap 24, and he's been as low as 10. As a matter of fact, he led eight laps. And the 37 car is off the course. That's Rick Corelli. Yeah, he just came right up here. I thought he's coming up my lap, Bob. <laughs> but well, I hope missed, not. No, he missed me about 20 feet. <laughs> so he's uh, going to try to get back out there. He's sort of his right wheel sitting on that sand we were talking about. The engine died on him, but uh, the left wheels are on the grass. So here he goes. Here he comes into the turn, and you can see he'll lock the brakes. And, of course, that takes his steering away, but he keeps the brakes locked right on out into the sand. And we understand Ricky Rudd is in the pits. And indeed, the Tide Chevrolet is coming in, Jerry. Scheduled pit stop for the 1989 winner of the Save Mart 300. What should be their final scheduled stop, barring a caution flag. Crew now going to work. They will change all four tires, clean the windshield, and again, very critical to get the car completely full of fuel. Right side tires are on. Left side jack comes around Eddie Dickerson, takes the left front tire off. The left rear tire is off, trying to get the car completely full of fuel. The can going in, they're finished, off the jack, and he is down and away. 22.1 second pit stop, and he's following the 76 car of Bill Sedgwick out of the pits. So Ricky Rudd has made his final pit stop of the afternoon, at least the final scheduled one. Where, where's Harry again? Oh. A while ago, he was, uh-oh, did I see some rear tire smoke? Uh -oh. Yeah, I sure did. He finally goes around and around. And both those guys able to get by Harry, and I don't think Harry hit anything. Cope and Kendall both able to get around, and now Gant comes in, John. Well, this should be the last pit stop for Harry Gant. He will come in for a tire change. A little bit of a problem, as you said, out there on the racetrack. The crew will go to work. Right sides are already on. Harry is, is pointing at his microphone. Or, or he's I think maybe he's out of water. He's pointing at the tube that comes up the floor. He's asking for a drink of water. Nobody's looking at him right now. Left sides are now going on. Harry now continuing to talk to the crew. They reach inside. I'm not really sure. I can't see exactly what the uh, problem is. But right now they'll come around and crawl in on the right side. Apparently, okay, what happened was the uh, plug from his radio had come to from his helmet. So in 39.2 seconds, cost him a lot of valuable time. The plug from the radio going to his helmet had become detached. So improvement had to reach in and fasten it back in for Harry. And it cost him more than 10 seconds to get that plug reattached. Yeah, it did. And it's too bad that he couldn't get their attention earlier because there was a free crew man that if he could have got their attention and they'd known what it was, they could have fixed it while they were finishing serving their cars. Well, see, that's one advantage to a driver and a crew that talk a great deal. Ned, like uh, Mark Martin and Steve Nielsen, they talk all the time. Well, if, if Harry and Leo Jackson, Charlie Preston, those guys talked a great deal, when they didn't hear from Harry for a couple of laps, they say, hey, our radio must be out. And, and to check that plug, but evidently Harry, Charlie, those guys don't have a lot of communication on the radio. Ernie Urban beginning to gain a little bit on Dale Earnhardt now as we see it coming through the S's. And another Fram Field summary for you. Yeah, the interval is closing between first and second. I'll tell you the guy that's impressing me, that guy back in fourth place. We look at, we're watching Ernie Irving go by the Kodak Film Chevrolet. But Mark Martin has been very impressive because 
if I'm not mistaken, after he spun up there, there hasn't been a caution flag, has there? Didn't he do that on the green and there hasn't been yep. a caution? That is correct. And he is now in fourth place right on Jeff Lodine's bumper and gaining on these guys. So Mark Martin's got a great race car this afternoon in that Valley Ford. Passing the number 20 car of Dirk Stevens, another one of the Winston West competitors. And as they come into turn number one, Urban is within about eight car lengths. You saw that there were, what, 26 cars, I believe, on the lead lap with Jeff Gordon, the last car on the lead lap. And he's not too far ahead of Dale Earnhardt and Ernie Urban. And Gordon considers this his home racetrack before he moved to Indiana, where he could drive sprint cars. He lived just down the road in Vallejo, California. Now we're riding with Tom Kendall. And he should be coming in for a pit stop. Well, well let's see. He's coming down to, to uh, turn 10. There he comes to the corner. We can see all the heat underneath the car. He backs off the gas. You can see when they're... Well, I guess he's not off the gas. I thought he was backing off the gas, but he's not. Yep. Coming in. Kendall is on pit road. Slowing it down to observe the speed limit. Jerry, he should be there before long. Well, Tommy Kendall, the economics graduate from UCLA, who's a road racing expert, brings the family Channel 4 Thunderbird up pit road very deliberately at 35 miles per hour. Now the brakes, and Paul Andrews, Danny Glad, the crew will go to work. It'll be a four-tire change. Danny Glad cleaning some debris out of the grill. Right side tires are on, left side already going on. Jack beneath the car trying to get the car fueled. The windshield has been cleaned, and you can begin to hear Tommy Kendall rev the engine in the background. He is away, 20.9 seconds. Up through the gears, as he will come off of pit road. And now, Dale Jarrett has passed another, taking a position away from Davey Allison. That moves him up to six. And he continues his march towards the front. Started back, we're in that 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Wow, up to sixth place. Very impressive. Here they come, off turn 10, toward me, down in turn 11. And we can see Dale Jarrett getting on the inside of Davey Allison, out breaking him. And Kenny Schrader's in the pits, changing right sides, looking inside the car for some reason. The jack goes down. That was the jack man looking inside the car, so uh, this is going to be a pretty slow pit stop for Schrader and the Kodiak Chevrolet. And he's motioning about something. The car's down off the jack and he's away. So that should be Ken Schrader's last regularly scheduled pit stop. Dale Earnhardt continues to hold on to the lead here at Sears Point with 47. Let's see, he may be... When's he going to turn into the pits, Bob? This could be it. The crew is standing by ready for him. Yes, he is. He's coming in the pits. And Ernie Irving stays on the racetrack. Jeff Bonine goes in the pits. Mark Mark stays on the racetrack. But here comes Dale Earnhardt, the good rich Chevrolet, down pit road. Leader relinquishes his position to make his regularly scheduled pit stop. And here's Jerry Punch. And the five-time national champion comes down pit road, Jeff Bodine, just behind him. And they will make their final pit stop. We would expect to see a four-tire change. Right side tires go on the Earnhardt car. Bodine pulls out. He has the very first pit on pit road, up toward turn one. One can of fuel in. And Bodine is in on the Motorcraft Ford. Right side of the Bodine car, changing tires. Now they're on the left side of the Goodrich Chevrolet. One can of fuel in. Now Chuckman Myers throws the can away. Earnhardt spins the tires and heads back to turn one. As Bodine is still in, getting left side tires. And now Jeff Bodine and the Budmore Motorcraft Ford will complete his pit stop and head back to turn one. Rusty Wallace had a pit stop, and he is now exiting pit road. For them because we could get a caution. This car number 81 has spun again and he can't get going and yellow flag will be coming out and these drivers, those that have not stopped, will have to stop under caution. That'll put them that father back in the field. So could be a, a definite advantage for those who have made the pit stops. 
That is Jeff Davis again that is spun up there.